you can't categorize an entire species like an Amazon parrot and just think that you're picking out a car. Jamie Lee here from Bird Tricks, and today I want to talk about why I don't recommend certain species of birds. A lot of you come and DM me and ask me what kind of bird should I get, what species of bird is best suited for me, etc, 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 and you guys get pretty frustrated with me that I can't answer you. <laughs> Here's the thing about labeling birds in a certain way of experience level or otherwise. Every single bird is its own personality, has its own likes, dislikes, characteristics, especially if you're looking at rehoming a bird or rescuing a bird. Things and experiences have happened in that bird's past to shape who it is that day. Um, and a lot of it you may not know about. You may not be told when you rescue or rehome that bird exactly what its past was, and you may not be able to fully understand it even if somebody did and was able to tell you its entire past. Now, how I wanna demonstrate this and what I mean by this in this video is with an Amazon parrot. A lot of people ask about Amazon birds and there's some really cute viral videos out there of Amazons either talking or singing really loudly and amazingly uh, because they are known for their talking abilities and mimicry. And there's some cute videos. Uh, I know especially somebody on Instagram who just looks amazing with her Amazon parrot and it makes you want one too. Now. <laughs> Here's where it gets tricky. I want you guys to realize that although there are characteristics that everybody kind of staples or attaches and labels Amazon parrots as, I went on and Googled some of them. And here's what the internet had to say about Amazon parrots. I cross-checked with about four different websites and they were the top websites that came up when I Googled this. They all said that Amazon parrots are affectionate, moody, playful, social, intelligent, active, and that they cannot stay calm. One of the websites even said, and I quote, owning an Amazon parrot is the equivalent to owning a dog without wings. Okay, Amazon people, those of you with experience with any species of Amazon, I know there's over 30 different species of Amazon. Those of you with experience with any sort of Amazon, please tell me in the comments, do you agree or disagree with that statement? I'm gonna go with a hard no <laughs> on agreeing with that. Uh, so the reality is that a lot of Amazons actually die of obesity because they are overweight in captivity, mostly because they get clipped, then they don't have a proper way of exercising because before they were clipped, they were likely exercising by attacking people in the home. And so that's what got them clipped in the first place, which doesn't get to the root of why that Amazon was actually attacking. It's just a quick fix of now the Amazon's not capable of attacking that way. So it has to look for alternatives to get to that person. The other cause for obesity with Amazons in captivity is just a poor diet, which is usually just that the human doesn't understand what a nutritional diet looks like for birds. But I don't want this video to be anything about that. What I want this video to focus on and to teach you guys is that you can't categorize an entire species like an Amazon parrot and just think that you're picking out a car, just thinking that you want a colorful bird that is really good at talking, that's super affectionate and cuddly and really playful and intelligent. And okay, I want that one. It doesn't work like that with birds. They are all completely unique and different. So I'm going to share a little tidbit of how I went to Ronnie's for the Love of Birds Parrot Rescue, who I work with frequently. So if you haven't heard of them, please check out a link in the video description to check more of them out and see what birds they have up for adoption, including the ones you're about to see me work with. Um, and I wanna share the experience that I had working with four different Amazon parrots in their rescue and show you how drastically different all four of these birds were. So let's get started. The first Amazon that I tried working with from Ronnie's For the Love of Birds Parrot Rescue was a lilac crowned Amazon. Now this Amazon was not social, was not playful, was not affectionate, and had absolutely no interest <laughs> in taking a treat from me. All I tried to do was give this bird a treat to have an initial interaction to see if this bird was interested in interacting with me and it was a hard no. <laughs> the 
The next Amazon that I went to work with was a blue fronted Amazon. And this Amazon was incredibly social. Didn't try the affectionate front, um, but very interactive with me and willing to train. So very, very receptive to target training. We had a great session and every time I came back to this bird to interact, it did very amazingly well. It was super confident in all of its abilities. But then when I actually opened up the cage to see if this bird wanted to step up onto me, it was a whole different ball game and the bird was incredibly fearful. What thing is that? He was targeting so well. Can you come? Look at that. See how scared he is? Yeah, he's too scared. Super gentle. The third Amazon that I worked with at Ronnie's was a double yellow headed Amazon. And this bird was incredibly aggressive. I was warned from the get go that I may not want to even try working with this bird in the first place. And I did struggle through this one pretty hardcore. I was trying to get this bird to go from aggressive to calm and gentle and I was really struggling. So I actually asked my husband to step in. I said, hey, you haven't worked with a bird yet. If you're gonna work with one, it should be this one because I'm scared. So have at it and actually my husband did way better getting this behavior. He set the training session really up for success which is something that I didn't do. What I was trying to do is work with what I had and the difference was with Dave, he looked at the situation and said how can I bend the situation to be in my favor and in the bird's favor to succeed and he did that. And it was merely just moving the cage to an easier position for him to access and for the bird to respond to. Like. Duh, wish I would have thought of it, but good going, Dave. You're smart. Love you. Well, are you gonna do any of them? Huh? You should do this one. <laughs> Gentle. Do you see how like, getting the treat is way more aggressive? He wants to tear you up. He's like, the cutest treat. This treat, this is what I would do to your face. You want me to film that? If you want. Whoa. This one's a little scary. I wish there was like an empty dish to drop it in instead. I can film this for mom. Now hang, hang tight and then we'll film it. Do you want to work with this one and I'll film it? This one scares me. Huh? Switch this one. Oh, where the 50 pieces come from? Denise brought it as Caprice Chain. Oh, that's cool. So it used the little treats <laughs> that look like... I mean, that's a pretty big chunk. That look like fingers. Go for it. He looks ready, man. It's a really gentle target. a little grumble. Do you think he's nice to you or no? No. He's an Amazon. So here, show this bar I want to show you guys. I'm going to use this bar spacing here to make it so I can get the treat more predictably without me having to lose a finger. I'm sorry, you're saving. It's so quiet in here. <laughs> Make sure target. Oh, cool. He wants. He wants some meat in there. Oh, he's trying to get to me. Well, they're making it hard. All right, sorry. 
We'll go for the treat. There we go. Oh, do you want me clicking? I thought you had a clicker. I think I gave it to you. It's already a lot better. so good the last and final Amazon that we worked with at the rescue was one that is a blue fronted Amazon and is incredibly fearful now I get this question quite frequently people will say my bird is scared of the sound of the clicker so solution number one you don't have to use a clicker I like to use a clicker because I feel like sometimes it speeds up my progress but that's because my birds understand what the clicker already means if your bird is fearful of the clicker you can do a couple different things you can muffle the sound to be not as loud so it's not as scary you can use a completely different sound um, I've had people use Snapple caps and things like that, or even a, a short whistle. Or you can just merely use the word good. Uh, anything can act as kind of that marker or a bridge to let the animal know that it did something correct and that a treat is coming. It does not have to be a clicker by any means. So what I had originally tried to do was I tried to have Dave use the clicker once I realized this bird was scared to death of this clicker, um, which was very unexpected. I had my husband click for me further away but I still noticed this bird responded negatively to it. And so I decided to just get rid of the clicker completely and just use the word good. So I just want to point that out. You guys aren't married to the clicker. You don't always have to use it. There's times when I don't have one on me, so I'm able to just use the word good. It's good to be universal that way and not to rely or depend on the clicker solely. You want to be able to kind of work with what you have in that instance. Good job. There we go, perfect. I would love to hear what your guys' experiences have been with Amazon parrots. I always feel like people are reading the comments and it does a lot of good to share your unique experiences so people can read through and see what they're in for. I think a lot of people end up wanting an Amazon parrot because they're beautiful and they can talk. It's the primary things that I hear about when people are picking an Amazon. It's usually their talking ability. Now, one of the things is I would never recommend an Amazon to somebody. I just wouldn't do it <laughs> based on everything that I've seen with them personality wise it's not a bird that I would ever say like hey I think you should go get an Amazon you would be perfect for one uh, they're one where I see so many issues that I honestly am like probably shouldn't be in captivity at all 
However, I have a flight student who has a dog training and grooming background, and she never planned on getting into parrots, but she ended up with an Amazon from a client of hers who had just given it to her. It was like, hey, my bird seems to like you more than me. Keep it. And they're such a match. Uh, it's amazing. The relationship is amazing. And I absolutely love it and don't think that anything else would be more perfect. So I do believe in people finding their animals or the animals finding their people and it just making sense and being a match. And so I think you should look for that. Look for that magic. Look for that connection where it's undeniable. It's still not easy. It's still complicated and hard and difficult, but it's worth it. And you have that connection with the animal. I think that's what everybody should seek out more than I want a green one. I want a pink one. <laughs> I want a big one. I want a small one. Um, it should be more about finding that connection with a specific animal who needs what you have. I hope you guys gained a lot of insight from this video and got to see how different each type of bird is even though they're the same species. These were all Amazon parrots that responded to target training entirely differently. So from teaching a bird who is fearful to target to teaching an aggressive bird to target, um, and even getting no response at all from some birds and then getting the ideal response from another Amazon. I hope that this kind of gives you some insight on how to work through it because I think that people give up on targeting way too quickly when they could easily push through and get the results that, that, that would make all the difference in the world on communicating with their animal. If you guys are interested in adopting a bird or fostering a bird, please check the video description for a link to Ronnie's For the Love of Bird Parrot Rescue located in Sandy, Utah. Whether you are making them handmade toys for their birds or making a little extra food and sending it to them, every little bit counts and helps towards raising and caring for these birds for as long as it takes to find them the forever homes that they deserve. You can also check out the Bird Tricks and Hyperfinch pin collaboration line. It's something that I'm super proud of. Every pin was designed by the artist over at Hyperfinch and it is a pin collection that is of my own birds as well as project birds that I've worked with, including Lefty from Ronnie's For the Love of Birds. And you can collect them all at hyperfinch.com. 100% of our profits go towards Ronnie's For the Love of Bird Parrot Rescue. So please consider splurging on some pins in an effort to support rescue birds.